It is something I've been involved in for many years, since I was born. My dad started flat track racing when he was young, and my cousin started as an amateur and made it to the pro level. My brother is now an amateur and trying to get his pro license, hopefully when he turns 18. Flat track is all about speed and technique, unlike supercross, which is jumps and other forms of activities like freestyling and stuff like that. Flat track is becoming a very big name and was in the X Games and has its own championship ring that they win and is now on NBC Sports. Although it is very intense and exciting, it is also very dangerous. Many people get injured in the sport and result in life-threatening injuries and serious injuries that go on with them forever. Safety gear is a big component to racing. Many people have different items and involving if you're an amateur or pro have different forms of gear. Today I want to talk about how safety gear is a key com component and how people should be informed how safety gear needs, needs to be used in order to protect their riders. When it comes to amateur racing, it is different than pro level. Pros go on miles and get up to speeds over 100 miles per hour. And amateurs tend to be a little slower due to not racing for money and not having that drive there or that they're just beginners and are starting to learn. A Brad, Brad Baker was a pro flat track rider and won a championship at a very young age. He recently, about two years ago, got in a pretty bad accident and injured his spinal cord. In an interview with Tim, he says, the way I landed compressed my spine and broke my T6 vertebrae and bone fragments goes into my spinal cord and now here we are. Accidents like this have enforced amateurs and pro riders to really look at their riding gear. Because of injuries like this, there's been many changes to the riding gear and with that comes different performance levels and amateur racing with different gear types. With that being said, I would like to talk about the PPE that goes on in the amateur racing. In a, the amateur rule book for the 2020 rule handbook, it stated that it is mandatory for all participants participants taking part in practice and competition to wear a full face protective helmet. Both of these helmets are considered full face protecting helmets because they protect your full face and the chin's covered and the chin is covered and not exposed. Therefore both of these are acceptable for amateur racing. Amateurs are also recommended but not required in the 2020 handbook to wear Protective gear such as um, chest protectors, like this one, gloves, knee pads, elbow pads, boots, and riding gear all over that. However, it is not required. The only thing required, and that is mandatory for all participants, is the full face helmet. However, for the pro athletes, it's much different. For the pro athletes, gear requirement is a big issue. All riders must show officials their gear before going out on the track. The officials look at the gear and make sure it's approved by their rule book and allow them to race. For AMA, in their rule book, you must have a full face helmet. As I stated before, both of these are full face However, they consider this a full face helmet without the visor. Corey Texer, a pro athlete, when doing an interview with Cycle News, made a comment on the full face helmet requirement, which was changed last year. He states that this is another safety based rule. It is sketchy going fast with a motocross style helmet. This is a motocross style helmet and when they do high speeds, they say it is dangerous and your head can jolt back by the high speeds that they pick up. Also a rule for pro athletes is an airbag suit. This, these leathers that they put on has an airbag built inside the chest that goes off 
when they crash or when there is an impact. It shows on the arm, it will light up when it's activated. So when the rider falls off their bike, the airbag goes off and hopefully protects their checks, their chest. AMA rules from 2020 made it a requirement for them to wear the airproof or the air suit bag. It states the self-inflating rider safety airbag is mandatory for competition in the AFT Super Twins class and recommended for use in AFT Production Twins and AFT Single classes. These requirements are strictly for pro riders and not for amateurs. Being that they both are in the flat track racing, it would be assumed that all rules should be equal no matter how, whether they're pro or amateurs because it is a safety related issue. There has been many times when I've gone to amateur events and the officials there do not check for riding gear and you've seen little kids in just jeans and boots and not fully protected. Because of this, it also causes many accidents and injuries. There has been many injuries reported in the pro and in the amateur level. Although they, the airbags and helmets are pretty pricey, which is why many amateur riders do not do it. The cost for leathers can go between $1,000 to $3,000 and if not higher. With the pros being able to get sponsored by big names and brands, it is easier for them to acquire these items. However, being that amateurs don't get that type of sponsorships, it is harder for them to acquire it. The sport is very pricey. However, if you're willing to get into it, your safety should be your first priority. I believe that it is important for parents getting their children into racing to look at the best safety equipment for their children so accidents don't happen and life-threatening injuries isn't something you should worry about. Overall, PPE in racing is very important. So you protect yourself and if you're a parent, you're protecting your child out there on the track. Amateurs or pros should both look at it as an issue, as a big issue and that they should take care of that. Amateur riders should be enforced and parents should want to protect their children because at the end of the day, the bike is replaceable, but your child or yourself is not. Thank you.